dear Mr. President, uh, dear ministers, colleagues, and friends of your government, uh, ladies and gentlemen, дорогие uh, коллеги, дорогие гости и друзья, it is a pleasure for me to be here at the Governance uh, Academy, and I would really like to thank the Governance Academy and uh, Mr. President for inviting me to present the WDR, the World Development Report 2016 on digital dividends, which uh, is for the very first time uh, uh, the World Bank report, the flagship report of the World Bank uh, that has been uh, this time, for the very first time ever, uh, devoted to the digital economy. Um, the, I will also talk briefly afterwards, if I have a few minutes, about what the World Bank is doing in the era of e-government and a few examples. <clears throat> this first slide uh, shows the, uh, the image that is on the cover of the WDR, and uh, it uh, captures the way uh, the digital revolution has spread around the world. President Ilves has already mentioned and explained the image. I'll talk a little bit more about it in a few minutes, so hopefully we'll pay a little bit more attention to my slides. <laughs> Um, the main message here is that mobile phones have spread more rapidly than any technology ever. Uh, nearly 10 out of, uh, 7 out of 10 people among the poorest, 20% today, uh, own a mobile phone. And 40% uh, of the world population is now online. In this slide, you will see how different the world looks if you look at it not from land mass, but from population online. We also have seen the, the uh, rise of the internet and how uh, it, it, how, the, how, how it uh, enables a number of, uh, of uh, transactions and possibilities. A typical day in the life of the internet involves billions and billions of emails, videos, online searches, and so on. Uh, so the digital revolution has brought, about, has brought about many immediate private benefits. But what about the broader development benefits? Faster growth, more jobs, and better services. This is what we call the digital dividends. Growth, jobs, and services. The report uh, actually mentions many technologies, and uh, you will see if you, if you read the report, which I hope you will. Uh, but uh, the report is not about technology. It is actually about how technology uh, has impact on development. And the report is full of many stories. Um, in, in the interest of time, I will not go in detail into all these stories, but this one is, for instance, about digital marketplaces. And this is um, Mr. Meng, who owns a ranch in Shandong province in China, and uh, how his income has moved from $200 a month he received in disability payments to more than $50,000 a year trading livestock online. So he says, I'm not a disabled man. I'm actually an online businessman. And this has been possible thanks to uh, online digital markets like Alibaba. There's another story uh, about uh, Ciprosa Akoth, who received, uh, through an experiment from an NGO in Silicon Valley, uh, an unconditional cash transfer just through her mobile phone, based on data, satellite data imagery that this uh, Silicon Valley NGO uh, analyzed and identified locations where the poorest people live. And they actually pinpointed a person that had previously not, uh, not been the beneficiary of any of the previous uh, revolutions. Uh, she is a woman born into poverty in a remote village in a poor country. But thanks to digital technology, she was able to receive that benefit. Um, and there's another story about uh, digital identities. Uh, and uh, many countries, from Nigeria to Pakistan to Estonia to Singapore, are implementing digital identities. These people in India, thanks to the Aadhaar uh, system, will for the first time, these boys, these children, uh, will for the first time receive and a digital identity I will and will not be <coughs> victims of human trafficking. Um, <clears throat> uh, but the report is not about interesting stories. It is 
uh, it is about economic models. And it shows how uh, the, uh, uh, there is a framework, it represents a framework to understand the impact of digital technologies through various mechanisms that lead to inclusion, that lead to efficiency and uh, innovation. And I'll illustrate those a few, you know, a few slides. First of all, digital technologies accelerate growth, and there's lots of data in the report that uh, talks about uh, the impact of digital technologies in trade, productivity, and competition. Digital technologies also expand opportunities through job creation, productivity, and consumer surplus. The digital technologies improve service delivery, and this is the topic of, the present, of today's uh, 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 conference, uh, through improving capacity and improving transparency. And there have been enormous uh, investments in e-government in many countries, but we have found, and the report goes into a lot of detail on this, that many countries are focusing on the core public financial systems, especially developing countries, and have not uh, focused yet on many of the other enablers of the digital transformation, such as online services or digital IDs. A few countries have uh, uh, multi-purpose digital identities, like Estonia. We've heard a lot about the, of the digital ID system in Estonia, and where the World Bank is supporting through a multi-platform uh, mechanism called ID for Development, uh, the establishment of multi-purpose ID systems throughout the world. Yeah. And citizen use of e-government, however, lags uh, supply even in EU countries. And there's a lot of uh, uh, analysis of this problem in, uh, in the, the report. So, what, have, what uh, the report uh, also presents is uh, that even though digital technologies have enabled many uh, transformations, there are also problems, and there's always a, a but, there's always a however in World Bank uh, reports. And this is the however. Uh, there is a pessimism about uh, the, the, uh, uh, the impact of digital technologies in many countries because despite all this uh, transformation, the growth of labor productivity has been slowing down. Middle classes in many advanced economies have seen income stagnate, and many governance indicators have not seemed to be improving. So the report asks why. And the first response is that there, are, there is still today a significant digital divide. Uh, six billion people without broadband, four billion people without internet, two billion without mobile phones, and 0 0.4 billion without a single digital signal, sig signal whatever that is. Um, so, there, there is a major digital divide still between countries and within countries, uh, across gender, income, age, and geography. And therefore, there is a large unfinished agenda to make internet access universal and affordable. But even if we resolve this uh, access problem, technology is not neutral in its impacts, and the report goes into details about analyze, analyzing the impact on productivity, on skills and on voice, and how the benefits tend to flow disproportionately to the better off, the more educated, and better connected. So the report argues that there are factors beyond technology that shape the adoption and the development impact. And this, this is what the report calls the analog complements to digital development that President Ilson mentioned earlier. Without them, the benefits of digital transformation will fall short. So what are these uh, digital complements? I'll talk about them briefly. These are good regulation, skills, and accountable institutions. So the first one, in relation to good regulation, the major, uh, the major transformation, uh, the major complement that is required for the digital transformation is competition. And this slide illustrates that. 
on the left, there is the adoption of technologies in the analog economy. The analog economy is much, much larger than the digital, the IT sector as such in most countries, right? So what really needs to drive uh, transformation is adoption in the analog economy. In the middle, there is uh, the, the gray area. Those companies that are either, that can be considered digital or analog, like Uber. Is Uber a taxi company or is it a software firm? So competition and regulations need to address these issues. And on the right side is the digital world, the digital economy itself. And even there we see in some cases the emergence of uh, monopolies. So good regulation is required to address this whole ecosystem and ensure a level playing field for firms to connect and compete. The second analog complement is the skills. Um, the, 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 need, the internet complements the skills and allows workers to be more productive and find rewarding opportunities and higher wages. But it is also changing the labor market. Automation, uh, we have found, is destroying some jobs in mid-level, white-collar occupations. So the most important public policy to address this issue is to help everyone gain the skills that technology complements and knows, not those that technology replaces. The third uh, analog complement uh, relates to uh, accountable institutions. Uh, globally, there have been a large number of e-government initiatives, uh, but in many countries these uh, investments have failed to address two challenges. One is the accountability relationship between service providers, policymakers, and citizens. And the second one is the ability of citizens to effectively participate and influence public debates. So, initiatives that leverage technology to improve service delivery would fail if policymakers and service providers are not accountable and therefore lack a strong incentive to improve services. So, accountability and of institutions is the third important uh, uh, annual complement. And these are a few examples that relate to e-government. Uh, the user feedback services uh, in, the, in Nairobi, which lead to uh, improving water utilities. But there are cases where citizens are not, en not engaged. And we found this example in Indonesia. I'm going fast because I have very little time. And uh, I believe that I had 30 minutes and I put slides for 45 minutes. <laughs> So, the, um, the other uh, aspect of uh, e-government services that is uh, described in the report relates to uh, elections and relates to transformation in terms of participation. And what the digital, what the digital uh, technologies have led to is that to reduce errors and fraud in voting and the impact of digital IDs has been major in increasing voter registration. Um, but there have been cases where digital technologies can reinforce socioeconomic disparities. And there is a lot of analysis on this topic in the report. We see Estonia, how participation has gone up, but there are cases where more privileged groups, as in Brazil, have actually uh, benefited most. And even World Bank projects are not immune to these uh, issues. And uh, we have seen that uh, they are more successful in countries where there are good quality, high quality institutions. So the um, WDR presents um, uh, some, a lot of data. There's a, there's a lot of data that has gone into the report. And uh, it, po it summarizes it in two axes. One is uh, on the on the bottom side, technology adoption, what we call the digital adoption index. And on the vertical axis is the quality of the complements. So a summary, very rough summary 
of the quality of regulations, skills, and institutions. And what we have found is that there is a race between the two. There is, it is not enough to invest in technology only without the complements. You will not reach the, the development goals. And the opposite is also true. So both need to go hand in hand. And uh, in terms of policies, the WDR presents a number of, uh, of policy options uh, that uh, developing countries, developing co uh, countries can uh, adopt uh, in three broad areas, sectoral, national, and global. Uh, at the sectoral level, the countries need to implement ICT policies that ensure that everyone gets affordable internet access. And this gets me back to the uh, the, uh, the front page of the cover page of the uh, WDR, which uh, shows migrants in Djibouti, which is a much richer country um, uh, than the, the country from where the country the migrants come from, which is Somalia, which is a much poorer country. But it's they they try through the uh, the bay to reach uh, the signal from the other side, from Somalia, to call their family members, because in Somalia the, the market is much more competitive, even though the country is much poorer. So regulations and competition do matter, and supply-side policies in terms of telecoms uh, are very clear what needs to be done. Strong competitions, public-private partnerships, and effective telecom and internet market regulation. The private sector will take care of most of the investments, but there may be cases where public sector investment is needed for universal access rural areas. Uh, but it is harder when it comes to demand-side issues, the so-called second-generation policies, and these relate to internet filtering or censorship, uh, personal privacy, cybersecurity, and even the most advanced uh, digital economies are having trouble with these issues. Second, the report uh, presents a number of policy options at the national level, beyond the sector. Um, and these are split by uh, different types of countries and by the three analog complements. So I won't get into the details, but uh, there's a wealth of information in the report. And this is a slide that summarizes the e-government uh, uh, related uh, policies are according to these three types of, uh, of countries. Uh, so emerging countries would focus primarily on the foundations, transitioning countries will uh, focus on ensuring that everyone is able to take advantage of new technologies, so universal, universality of adoption, <coughs> and transforming more advanced countries uh, need to take care of the second generation policies that I mentioned earlier. Um, and the final chapter talks about uh, policies at the global level and how to address issues uh, that are transcend the borders of countries and how institutions like the World Bank can leverage these technologies. If the internet disrupts everything, everything should not also disrupt the business of development. That's what we try to talk about. And I'll give you a few examples of World Bank um, activities. This is... Uh, just an introduction, so I'll probably skip uh, all this. The main two mechanisms by which the World Bank supports uh, developing countries are client countries. They're not only developing countries. Uh, in uh, implementing digital development uh, transformation are supporting ICT sector growth and development through digital connectivity and supporting improved service delivery through ICT, through what we call digital government platforms and solutions. This is one example uh, on connectivity in uh, Central Asia. We're developing a, pro uh, a regional program called Digital Central Asia and South Asia, which is focused primarily on connectivity, but it does also have a component related to improving e-government uh, services and uh, promoting the national IT industries. 
There's another example uh, in Mongolia where connectivity was uh, used to address the problems of the poorest the segments of the population. And we're working with the European Union on a Connected Communities initiative to address issues of last-mile connectivity in a number of uh, selected rural communities within the European Union. These were selected by the European Commission through a bottom-up uh, approach. Now, in the area of digital government platforms, we have uh, supported many countries, and this is a, a summary of uh, the, the results that these countries have achieved in the UN e-government survey before and after the implementation of the World Bank project. We have supported Moldova in the implementation of a very successful uh, government cloud. Uh, we have supported Ghana implement an electronic taxation system through the use of uh, PPPs. And there are many, many, many other examples that uh, uh, would take half a day to describe in detail. We're now working on what we call a digital development partnership, which is a multi-stakeholder platform uh, to finance the uh, adoption of uh, digital dividends uh, uh, terminology and, and I mean our solutions in uh, in our development uh, assistance and it's a public and private uh, 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 mechanism that will focus on a number of topics data uh, digital economy internet access for all digital government mainstreaming mainstreaming digital innovation and it is open to both public sector and private sector uh, donors Yeah, this I basically summarized. And finally, this is my last slide. I'm uh, uh, ahead of my, my, 20 minute, my 25 minutes. Uh, essentially, going back to the summary of the, uh, the, uh, the World Development Report, connectivity plus complements means uh, digital dividends. And uh, the, uh, the conclusion is that when countries build strong analog foundations, they will, have, they will harvest ample digital governments, digital dividends, faster growth, more jobs, and better services. Thank you for your time, and sorry for rushing through the presentation.